السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ می پیس مرسی اے بلیسنگس آف آل مائی ٹی گاڈ بی آن آل آف یو ان دا لاسٹ ٹوینٹی فور آرس آئی اینڈ می پی آر ہیو بین اپروچڈ بائی اسکورز آف جرنلسٹ اینڈ میڈیا ہاؤزز ریگارڈنگ دا اسٹیٹمنٹ میڈ بائی شیخ یا سرکادی رناؤنڈ دائی فرام یو ایس اے آن ہی سوشل میڈیا اکاؤنٹس ریگارڈنگ مائی سیلف whether these statements are true or not. Three and a half months before, the Indian officials, they approached me for a private meeting with a representative from the Indian government. And when he came to Putrajaya in the fourth week of September 2019 to meet me, he said that he is coming after personally meeting and under the direct instructions of the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and the Home Minister of India, Amit Shah. And he said that he wanted to remove the misconceptions and the miscommunication that is there between myself and the Indian government, and he wants to provide me a safe passage to India. I thought that, imagine, the same BJP government which hounded me for the last three and a half years, the same person, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, who used my name no less than nine times in a span of less than two minutes in his election speech in May 2019. Now they are bartering with me for a safe passage. It's too straight to be true. And he said that he would like to use my connections to better the relationship between India and the other Muslim countries. And I said, that as long as you do not ask me to do anything against the teachings of the glorious Quran, against the teachings of the Sahih Hadith, and secondly, I do not want any personal benefit. And lastly, as long as it benefits the Muslim Ummah, I have no problem in cooperating with you. And the meeting lasted for several hours. And then he told me that he wanted me to support the BJP government when they revoked Article 317 in Kashmir. And I flatly refused. I said, according to me, revoking Article 317 in Kashmir is unconstitutional and it is taking away the rights of the people of Kashmir. I cannot support an act of injustice and neither can I betray the people of Kashmir. And when he realized that I will not support any act of injustice. He said that he has no problem, even if I speak against any agencies of India, whether it be the NIA, whether it be the ED, whether it be the police, but I should not specifically speak against the BJP government and against Narendra Modi. And I told him that according to me, the NIA, the ED, they are not to blame. They are just following their political bosses and they're being forced to do what they're doing. And I'm not here to speak against any government. I'm a Dai who's spreading the message of Islam. As long as they do not do injustice to the human beings and to Muslims, why should I speak against them? And lately, on the 17th of December 2019, I gave a press statement against CAA, the Citizen Amendment Act, and which was published in the media. When I heard statements, and I saw on the video statements of many Muslim leaders in India, when they're openly and completely supporting the BJP government, when they revoked Article 317 in Kashmir, I thought to myself, how can a Muslim who has the basic knowledge of Islam do this. Some of them supported the NRC in Assam. Some went to the extent of saying that NRC should be done throughout India. Now I realize that these Muslim leaders surely may have been blackmailed, may have been pressurized, may have been forced to support the unjust BJP government, otherwise face dire consequences. I have a message for the Muslims of India. It is noble to speak against injustice. But if you fear a backlash, 
and you're afraid, the least you can do is keep quiet. But supporting an unjust act is an Islamic. You're bartering your seat in Jannah for your security in dunya. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 36, is not Allah enough for a servant? But yet they frighten you with others besides him.